From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and welcome to tonight's broadcast. Our top story, Alaska Governor Bill Walker today announced his intention to accept additional federal and mental health trust fund authority money to expand Medicaid in Alaska. Walker sent a letter to the Legislative Budget and Audit Committee giving members the required 45-day notice of his intent. Walker included Medicaid expansion in his original budget proposal, language that was stripped by the legislature. Walker then introduced a Medicaid expansion bill, which was not taken to the floor for a vote during the regular and a pair of special legislative sessions. Walker says the expansion would bring $146 million to the cash-strapped state and provide health care to 20,000 Alaskans in the first year. We know that more than 60% of Alaskans want Medicaid expansion. Since the conclusion of the last session, my team and I have been reviewing all of our options moving forward. <clears throat> During that time, some have asked me if I'd given up on Medicaid expansion. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. Today, I have to announce I've taken the next step. Today, Alaska becomes the 30th state to accept the benefits of Medicaid expansion. State Representative Tammy Wilson is running for mayor of the Fairbanks North Star Borough. She filed a letter of intent with the Alaska Public Offices Commission yesterday. So far, she and Assembly Presiding Officer Carl Castle are the only ones running. Now, in 2009, Wilson ran for mayor against Luke Hopkins and lost. She was appointed to the State House the same year. Wilson said she decided to run because during the time she was getting petition signatures for a clean air program amendment, several people asked her to. There's been more and more issues about our private property rights here, regulations that are going on, and um, local issues have always been very important to me. One of the six teens accused of participating in a violent attempted robbery earlier this year has agreed to testify against his co-defendants. Tyler Mullen pleaded guilty to reduce charges of fourth-degree misdemeanor assault and first-degree burglary in exchange for his, quote, help to authorities, end quote. According to court documents, Mullen and five other teens attempted to rob a victim to obtain marijuana for Arctic Man. The teenagers reportedly went to the victim's residence with a handgun, shotgun, and baseball bat. The victim tried to defend himself with a knife but says he was beaten with the bat. As part of the deal, his sentence will be 180 days in jail, three years of a suspended jail sentence, and the conditions of testifying against the other teenagers when and if they go to trial. The Alaska Department of Corrections says a 36-year-old Fairbanks man died while in custody. Dustin Wallace died just after 5 p.m. Monday at Fairbanks Memorial Hospital and Alaska State Troopers are investigating. The Corrections Department says Wallace was booked into jail April 2nd on charges of violating conditions of his previous release. The state medical examiner will conduct an autopsy. Well, don't worry if you happen to see dark smoke coming from the airport yesterday evening. It was all just a part of an emergency preparedness exercise. The Fairbanks International Airport Police and Fire Department was conducting annual training to meet requirements set forth by the Federal Aviation Administration. Controlled burning of diesel fuel allowed firefighters to simulate a real accident and work on the skills needed to keep travelers safe. Fires from the exercise produced sporadic columns of black smoke, which lasted several minutes each near the southern region of the airport. Sar Sergeant Alfonso Allen says obstacles are placed in the burn area to make the simulation as realistic as possible. Aircraft tend to separate in pieces once they um, have an accident and the fuels go, fuel goes around them. So they represent, you know, a mock aircraft crash with the liquid fires, fuel fires going around them. And that's the whole goal if we have to fight it with a handline uh, to push it away and keep, try to keep it contained as best we can. When we come back, even though it's summer, the Northern Alaska Environmental Center is preparing to host a weekend of activities to raise awareness of climate change here in Alaska. Also, the World Eskimo Indian Olympics got underway last night with an array of events. Our cameras were there and we'll share the pageantry with you. These stories and others coming up. Stay with us. And welcome back. The Northern Alaska Environmental Center is preparing to host a weekend of activities aimed at raising awareness toward the effects of climate change in the state of Alaska. The series of events called the Weekend for the Arctic will kick off on Saturday with a float protest at Tanana Lakes. Kayakers and other boaters will stir up the water as part of a national movement against Arctic drilling. A barbecue open to the public will be held at the Northern Center on Saturday night as well. 
And racers will help move the organization's cause forward on Sunday with the 19th annual Run for the Refuge at UAF. Participants will be able to choose between a 5 and 10K course. Executive Director of the Northern Alaska Environmental Center, Elizabeth Dabney, says the ultimate goal of the event is to get people talking about climate change. The Northern Center specifically wants Alaskans' voices to be heard on a national level, that this is our Arctic. Um, the U.S. gets to be an Arctic nation because of Alaska, and so we would love Fairbanks to start this conversation very specifically on a local level that has an opportunity to get national attention. The World Eskimo Indian Olympics entered day two following last night's opening ceremony at the Carlson Center. The lighting of a seal oil lamp officially opened the games. The flames will burn through Saturday night or more likely early Sunday morning when WEO 2015 wraps up. Nicole Johnston delivered her final welcome address as WEO Board of Governors Chair during last night's ceremony. Always a highlight, the march of dance contestants brought an array of voice and drum to the floor. There will be dance performances all throughout the games. The 2015 Miss Wheo con contestants were also introduced Wednesday night. Miss Wheo will be crowned Friday night. Now the games represent a coming together of cultures, but it's also an opportunity to pass that culture on to the next generation. Oh yeah, getting the youth involved is a major part of Wheo because Wheo is all about continuing and keeping the tradition going and getting the youth involved so they know what the um, cultural traditions are and so it doesn't die out. Normally, it's a tragedy to burn your food, but that's not the case with this barbecue recipe. Let's head down to Big Daddy's Barbecue for the perfect burnt ends. Hi, Steve Moody here from Big Daddy's Barbecue again. With another segment of Backyard Barbecue. Today, we're gonna show you how to do some burnt ends. You start with your cooked brisket, and you're gonna wanna cut off the deckle point. That's the fatty side. Now you want to hit that again with some more rub and then back into your smoker for a couple of hours. Now we've got a finished product for you. What you want to do is render out some more of that fat, make it a little more tender. Then you're going to chop it up into squares, saute it up in your favorite sauce, and enjoy. Check out all of our recipes at webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Big Daddy's Barbecue. Samples. Why aren't there ever samples? Up next in sports, Joe has a story from WEO about families in competition. Also, the Fairbanks 49ers come back for a big win and are now one of the top teams in the state. Those stories and more with Joe after the break. Welcome back Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook here with your local Thursday sportscast. WEO is more than competition. It's about camaraderie and most of all, family and tradition. That was on display today as a family from Eagle River and Fairbanks have tonight's WEO Spotlight. Here's more. At the Carlson Center, WEO athletes competed in the Eskimo stick pull. The event simulates bringing in a seal from a hole in ice. Matthew Sado Evans won the men's title for the second straight year, but families were at odds in the event. Simon Walker faced dad Brian Walker, a dominant athlete in the 90s, for the first time. Simon won. I thought about it like last night, and it was just a quick thought. And just thought about it, us, you know, going against each other here in the Eskimo stick pull. So. It's pretty interesting. I've raised my kids around the games, and so it was uh, kind of a full circle, you know, just like our, our native ways are. It's always a full circle with everything. Mandy and Asia Sullivan are mother and daughter. Mandy got the best of Asia in last year's final. Mandy finished out of the finals today, but coached up her daughter, Asia, who went on to win her third stick pool title. She just told me to use my legs. She's like, I have more powerful legs and arms. And a lot of them, I was trying to use my arms and my back. And then that final one, I used my legs and I really got through it. I think that's what helped me. She's such a well-rounded, uh, strong athlete. And when you put yourself in there with your thinking and then taking 
taking in the advice and using everything together as one unit, it really makes a difference and I really got to see that with her. So it's nice to see someone so young when she started at 12 to who she is at 18, to use that all in her and just come out a very strong, happy child. It's, it's very heartwarming. With every tug and pull, these families are growing closer and passing on tradition. Joe Cook reporting. And staying with WIO during opening night on Wednesday at the Carlson Center, one of the premier events took place, the One Hand Reach event, which is a test of balance, strength, and concentration. Autumn Ridley won the women's title with a reach of 58 inches, one inch better than her past two victories of 57 inches. Clark, the world record holder in the event, won his fourth title in a row the reach of 68 inches, two inches away from his record. Ridley also leads the women's blanket toss at the prelims on Wednesday. Crystal Lincoln, Marjorie Tabone, and Ivory Okulisic advance to Friday's finals as well. The Gold Panthers probably can't wait to get out of Fairbanks, not because of anything bad. They're just searching for wins. Alaska starts a four-game road trip tonight, Wednesday night, at Grotto Memorial Park. The Gold Panthers lost the first game of a doubleheader against the Anchorage Bucks 4-1. Game 2 action here, and the Panthers were behind the eight ball early, literally. They trailed 8 to nothing to start Game 2. They showed some signs of life in the sixth inning. Renee Martinez finds a hole and an error leads to a run, bringing in Riley Roberts. Austin Bush will bring in Martinez with a base knock and Alaska was sniffing at a comeback. It was an 8-5 to five game going into the final inning, but too much Bucks who clinched the win with defense. They sweep Alaska with an 8-5 win in seven innings in game two and take the series. Former Gold Panthers manager Mike Rahovic admits that this series victory was a bittersweet for him. I've worn the Panther uniform three different times in my career as a player, as an assistant coach, as the head coach last year, winning the, the Alaska Baseball League Championship. It's been very weird sitting on this side of the field. But I saw a lot of familiar faces that came up and said hi, and it's been, it's been weird, but it's been fun. I know what it's about, the history of this place and everything. I know what Don Dennis is about. It's been hard. The third meeting between the Fairbanks 49ers and Alaska Wild was important given this game counted in the Legion League standings. The third round of this local rivalry was at Marlin Field on Wednesday night. Ron Perdue of the 49ers, he breaks a 3-3 tie in the bottom of the sixth with an RBI triple, bringing in Caleb Mortz to break the give the 49ers a lead. That hit sparked a huge run for the 49ers who put up a six spot in the sixth. The Wild tried to get back in it with a Ben Hall hit. It drives in a run for the Wild, but the 49ers, man, they were just rolling. Tyler Hill, who was enlisting in the Air Force, had nine Ks and retired the final three batters. The Niners win 9-4 to four in seven innings to complete the comeback. They trailed 3 to nothing early on. The 49ers are now 8-3 and three in league play. The victory puts Fairbanks in a tie for, th for fifth in the state with Diamond in the State Legion baseball standings. It's nice to have everybody step up. I mean, Ryan, me, middle of the lineup is here today. Even the bottom of the lineup today was hitting the ball well. So, I mean, it's real nice when we have uh, good at bats from everybody up and down the lineup. It's good. I haven't played in a year, but I mean, I still I still got some of it. And uh, this is my last season before I joined the military. So, it'd be good to get, get it all out before I miss it when I get it get done. We've tossed around the idea of going to Idaho at the end of the year for all year, pretty much. Even Rod said it. So, I mean, we can, we can go as long as we have the pitching and the defense. I think we're good. And that's a wrap for sports. Our weatherman Mike Schultz is up next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into our Thursday night newscast. Mike Schultz is once again talking about the weather, and it was beautiful today. Lots of sunshine, temperatures warming back up again. It was uh, one of those days where you definitely wanted to play hooky, and it looks like uh, tomorrow maybe not quite as good, and the weekend looks a little wet too. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Here's our photograph for tonight. Mark Schilzans was up this morning at 5 o'clock, and he captured this beautiful sunrise. Look at the colors there and the formations. Again, a very nice photograph. And as always, if you have a photograph that you want to share, well, send it over to us at photos at ktvf11.com. We'll share it with the rest of the audience. Your numbers, 75 for the day. The record low uh, was, I, mean, I should say the overnight low was 53. The record high, 91. That was in 1918. And the record low, 39 in 1905. Our sunrise and sunset, exactly 20 hours of daylight, a loss of seven minutes from yesterday. What's going on on the satellite and radar? As you can see, more moisture working its way in from the south. And looks like some of it's going to work its way through the passes into the Alaska interior. We had some showers overnight that dropped some pretty healthy rainfall. The 
they obviously cleared the skies out. Raining over southeast Alaska, too. On the big map, you can see it all translating here to more rain widespread all over southeast Alaska. Rain around the Anchorage Bull, also raining at Kodiak. Cloudy skies along the Aleutian chain up and down the uh, west coast. And partly cloudy to clear skies with 65 for the high at Nome today. Another chilly day in Barrow, 39 there in Fort Yukon, 72 and partly cloudy skies. Lower 48 weather. Not too bad in Seattle, 79 degrees. And once again, more 100 degree temperature readings in Las Vegas and Phoenix. Over the 90 degree mark in Denver, 94 at uh, Salt Lake City. 96 in Dallas, a lot of very hot temperatures over the eastern half of the country. As you can see, Salt, uh, St. Louis at 92 degrees. Not too bad in Chicago, over the northeast, 80 degrees in New York. And then down across the southeastern sections, thunderstorms and humid conditions and very hot temperatures too. On the satellite and radar, again, you can see a lot of energy moving across from the southwest. This is the southwest monsoon setting up for the uh, Desert Southwest, activity moving across the Great Lakes. There's thunderstorms over the deep south. And then out to the west, things are looking pretty good. In fact, lots of clear skies for the most part in warm temperatures. Now the real field temperatures tomorrow are going to really be hot. As you can see, they're going to range from 110 to 120 degrees in the darkest red areas. That's over the Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and uh, uh, Georgia areas, while the 100 to 110 degrees elsewhere. Very hot temperatures because the jet stream once again is way up to the north, allowing that warm air to come up from the south. And then thunderstorms in all association with the southwest monsoon uh, developing across the desert southwest and uh, the western half of the country. Well, as far as the uh, Alaska situation is concerned, for the northern sections, clouds and fog expected for Barrow. Showers and thunderstorms for Nome and isolated thunderstorms with some smoke for Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, a mixed bag, once again looking at cloudy skies at Delta. Showers in Healy and isolated thunderstorms possible for Fairbanks. The rain will continue over southeast Alaska. At Juneau, cloudy skies with a chance of rain in Ketchikan. And also out to the west, a wet forecast there. Rain for Cold Bay. Rain becomes showers in Kodiak. And showers become rain in Bethel. So kind of off and on there. And over the uh, Anchorage Bowl, uh, wet conditions. Rain becomes showers at Anchorage. And showers are expected at Homer with more rain at Valdez. Oh, it's a Thursday night, which means it's time for our fishing report. As you can see here, we're looking at from the Life Med folks uh, that in the, Hall the uh, Valdez area, the halibut fishing is still very good. And the silvers are slowly increasing in the bay there. So pretty good uh, chance of seeing the, the silvers by next week. Second run of reds is now moving into the Kenai River and the... Uh, um, other rivers down there and of the Matanuska Valley. Some silvers are starting to arrive, but again, no kings are allowed. And as far as our forecast for the remainder of the night, scattered clouds early, then isolated showers developing by morning 53 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast, cloudy with isolated showers or thunderstorms. Not as warm as it was today, only 66. And the extended forecast through the weekend, unfortunately, rain expected on Saturday and then cloudy skies for Sunday with lots of sunshine returning back to the picture for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Overnight lows once again look very consistent right around the mid-50s each day, even warming up to near 60 degrees by Monday night into Tuesday. So the weekend, you may have to keep an umbrella handy, but we're going to be optimistic and say that Sunday looks better than Saturday. Well, it's just fortunate that the majority of uh, competitions for WIO is inside the Carlson Center. So. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Right. So it's going to be a lot of kicking finals going on uh, tonight, tomorrow night, even Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be mm -hmm. pretty exciting. Blanket toss. Don't want to miss that Well, either. see, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because our former colleague, Daryl Lewis, was talking about his experience with the blanket toss. So the question is, are you going to try? Uh, probably not this year. What I am, <laughs> what I am planning to do, something for uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping to uh, try muck tuck. Ooh, so, the muck tuck eating and preparing. Yes, that yeah, is a contest. Yeah, I'm going mm -hmm. to try my hand at that. And, you'll be showing uh, that next well, week. Yeah. <laughs> Still. And uh, you'll wash that down with some Eskimo ice cream afterwards. I'll tell you about that too. So. Very good. Well, All right. Why not? All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mike. That will wrap up this edition of our broadcast. We're glad you could join us. Well, tonight on NBC Nightly News, four Marines were shot and killed at two separate recruiting centers today in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lester Holt has all the details next. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. All right, that's it from all of us here at the News Center. Have a great night. Good night.